Welcome to Cornerstone. Welcome to Upshop. Welcome to Cornerstone. Welcome to Upshop. Welcome to Upshop. Welcome to Cornerstone. Welcome to Cornerstone. Welcome. Hello and welcome to our special Cornerstone and Op Shop service. My name's Andy and I'm the manager of Cornerstone and Op Shop, which is part of the ministry of St. James Church. Today we're going to be telling you a bit more about the work of Cornerstone and Op Shop. You'll have the opportunity to meet some of our volunteers to find out why they volunteer with us. And we're going to be exploring the theme of hope. Throughout this special Cornerstone Op Shop service, I've hidden the word hope which will be hidden in the scenes that you're going to see throughout this service. See how many you can find. At the end of the service, I'll let you know how many I've hidden. So let's start off this morning by singing together Cornerstone.
Before the coronavirus pandemic, Cornstone operated as a coffee bar, selling affordable, good quality drinks, a selection of tray bakes and crisps. Cornstone operates a food bank where people who are in urgent need of food can get an emergency food parcel. The food parcel will last a couple of days. Anyone need of a food parcel can phone Cornerstone on 549796 to request one. Cornerstone has rooms that we hire out to groups including the NHS midwives who run a weekly clinic in Cornerstone. It's also used by arts and craft groups, both during the day, but in the evening as well. We also use Cornerstone as a way to bring our community together and host evening events such as film nights, sing-along nights. And at Christmas we host a carol evening where we have an evening singing carols, there's a short reflection and we give away loads of free drinks and mince pies and non-alcoholic mulled wine. <laughs> Cornerstone also sells a great selection of pre-loved books, CDs and DVDs, and we also host a Christian resource centre selling brand new Bibles as well as pre-loved Christian books, CDs, DVDs and a selection of Christian gifts as well. Obviously because of the pandemic we've had to alter the way we operate, Cornerstone's currently being used as an op shop because we have a lot more space to social distance, to display our items. Our op shop has been in Carlisle for just under 30 years now. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary next year. So our customers are able to find good quality pre-loved items that they might have wanted to purchase at full price but couldn't afford to do so. Um, it's amazing how many items we get donated that are still brand new and have their labels on. Um, so we're able to offer those to our customers at, at an affordable price. We're currently in the process of relocating our op shop just across the road to a new premises. The new shop space is bigger, it's going to be brighter, which will allow us to display a lot more stock. Because the new shop space is bigger, it will be easier to maintain social distancing, creating a safer shopping experience. The new shop has a more suitable storeroom and sorting space, which will be a much nicer place for our volunteers to work when they're sorting through all the donations that we've received. We're hoping to open our new shop in October, and if that happens, that will mean we can reopen Cornerstone as a coffee bar as well. So watch this space for more details as we get closer to an opening date. I'm no longer needed by my owner. So they're putting me into a box. Oh! 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 It's very dark and lonely in here. I hope they let me out soon. Oh, there's a strange man with a mask. Oh, where are you taking me? Oh, we're going into a quarantine. What? What? Oh, I've been sitting here now for 72 hours. And now I'm being taken into a sorting room. Oof. I've been sitting here a while. But it looks like somebody's coming to take me away. I'm here. I'm here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh. Gentle. The ladies looked at me to see if I could be sold and have put a sticker on me. Yes, it's got a price on. Woo oh, where, where are we going now? Oh, I've been taken into, into this shop. And, and now I'm on this table. Oof, with all these other things that's for sale. Oh, 
somebody, someone's picking me up. Yes, and now, yep, yep, they're taking me to the till now. Yep. Oh, that means I'm, I might be going to somebody else's house. Oof, oh, I've been put down again. Oh, I want, no, you're just checking the price. Oh, it looks like they're paying for me now. Yes, yes. I'm on my way. I'm going to a new home. Yay! And here we have Donna, one of our fantastic volunteers in Cornerstone. So Donna, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, yes, um, well, I'm currently um, unemployed, uh, um, which means that it gives me some kind of like purpose and it makes me feel motivated that I have something to come out um, for and it gives me a lot of um, experience to get back in for when I am ready to be employed again and useful experience and it makes me feel um, like a valuable um, asset um, to Cornerstone because I've achieved such a lot and it's given me a lot more confidence as well. Fantastic Donna, thank you. And Donna, tell me, what gives you hope? Um, being valued by other people and that I have got things that I can give as like I suppose in the form of um, what I can achieve as an individual and as a person and it's just made me realise that I have got gifts I can give and, and I can achieve things and goals. Fantastic, thank you very much. We're now going to sing our second song, Praise is Rising.
Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says, We have this hope, an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. And Romans chapter 16 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Today we are going to make this anchor craft. You will need strips of paper, some glue, some pens, some scissors, a hole punch and some string. Start by getting two strips of paper and putting some glue in the middle of one of them and sticking them together, kind of making a bit of a cross. Then with some scissors, cut part of the strip of paper, as you can see here. Now get the D-shaped piece of paper for the anchor, put some glue on it and stick it to the strip of paper. Once this is done you'll need to find some string and cut a piece of string. Now you might need a grown-up to help you this part. Gather a hole punch and make a hole at the top of the anchor, thread the string through it and tie the string together. The anchor's ready for hanging up. But before you do that, write your name at the bottom of the anchor and then write Jesus in the middle of the anchor. Your craft is now complete, well done. If someone was to ask you, what are you hopeful about? What would your answer be? During lockdown, I was hoping for the day when lockdown would end and I could see family and friends face to face again and not on a straight screen. Sometimes I may be hopeful that the weather's going to be sunny for the weekend or that my day will be a good one. These examples of hope may well be valid in the situation I'm in, but ultimately they're short-term hopes and will soon be forgotten. As a follower of Jesus, I have a hope that is greater than anything you can imagine. This hope is bigger than anything the world can offer, and it's because of what Jesus has done. I found a biblical definition of hope and I wanted to share it with you. Hope is commonly used to mean a wish. Its strength is the strength of the person's desire. But in the Bible, hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness. So with the example of the sunny day, I can hope as much as possible that it will be sunny. But the strength of that hope only comes from my desire. When it comes to the hope we have in God, our hope is not based on how much we want it, it's based on God. 
In Hebrews 6.19 it says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Hope is about God. It's about his character. We cannot do anything to change it. What a relief. So if we place our hope in God, rather than the things that shift and change, such as the Cumbrian weather, we can rely on that hope. Anchors keep ships steady in stormy seas. They're strong and stop them floating away from the safe harbour. Nothing can be more secure than the anchor of hope that God promises us. During lockdown, many churches took their services online. More people connected with a church than ever before, tuning in on YouTube or Facebook, rather than having to step into an unfamiliar environment. Online search engines saw a 50% rise in people searching for coronavirus prayers during March 2020. This shows that when a difficult situation arises, we look outside ourselves because we know we can't deal with the situation on our own. By putting our hope in God, we're letting go of control of the situation and trusting God. If we let God take charge, we know that he has our best interests at heart as he loves us beyond our understanding. Romans 15:13 says, "May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit." Putting our hope in God also means that God gives us joy and peace. The Bible tells us that this is not just a little bit of joy and peace, but we will overflow with it. Joy is something deeper than happiness, and it can be ours as we hope and trust in God. Peace means much more than simply not being at war. At the heart of the Christian message is the belief that the life and death of Jesus gives people peace with God and peace with themselves. Jesus' peace is eternal, just like hope is eternal, whereas the hopes of everything else a temporary. This doesn't mean life will be easy, it won't be, but it brings comfort to me and many people around the world to know that God is working through the situation we are in and that we can draw closer to him during those difficult times. During World War II, a lady called Corrie ten Boom hid Jewish people in her home in Harlan, Netherlands. There was a secret room to hide those hunted down by the German police. She did this even though this was at great personal risk to her and her family. Corrie had a trust and hope in God that was far greater than the circumstances she was in. Eventually she was betrayed and taken to a concentration camp. There she experienced terrible conditions for sleeping, eating and working. Corrie and her sister Betsy used the opportunity of being in close confinement with hundreds of other women to speak about Jesus, to show them that they too could have a hope beyond what they could see and experience. Her father and sister both sadly died while in prison camp, and she went on after her release to speak about the hope that she had in God. Corrie spoke to thousands of people all over the world right up until her death. This is one of so many examples of how hope anchors us in God and helps us to see above our circumstances. Corrie said that when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. Corrie lived out the hope that she had in God. We can sometimes feel like running away when things become difficult or in a situation we don't want to be in. The COVID-19 pandemic has not been an easy time for any of us. 
But hope is not dependent on a Covid vaccine or our feelings or our situation. Hope comes from knowing Jesus. Hope is putting our trust in God. Lord, we bring before you our community, the village of Cummersdale and the areas of Denton Home and Long Sowerby. We pray for those who face great loneliness. We pray for those who are ill or housebound. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet. Thank you that you have given us the opportunity to reach out to those around us. Thank you for Cornerstone and the op shop and all that happens in that place. We pray for our volunteers and for all those that work in our community. We ask that you would help us to make a difference with just the little things that we do. And we pray for each of those food parcels that goes out from our food bank, that those people would know that they are loved and that they are precious and that we care about them. And we ask that in time they would want to know more about you. Amen. Lord, we pray for our schools, for Robert Ferguson and Cummersdale. We thank you for the staff who are working so hard to keep our children as safe as they can during these difficult times. We ask for your strength for them and that we ask also that you protect all of those children and adults that there would be no outbreaks of coronavirus. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for our NHS, for our care workers and all those involved in the fight against coronavirus. We ask that you will give them strength to carry on even when they are discouraged and exhausted. Thank you for everything that they do. We pray that you will strengthen them and give them hope just as we know that we have hope in you that goes beyond our circumstances. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray for our country. We pray for our government and our Queen as they make decisions relating to so much of what happens in our everyday lives. We ask that you would give them wisdom and courage and discernment to know what is right. Lord God, we ask that you will protect them and guide them and that your will would be done in this place. Amen. Lord God, we pray for our world, for those countries that have poverty, famine and conflict, and for all those people that are struggling with their just day-to-day -day life. As we look at a map of the world, in a moment of quiet, I invite you to pray for a country. In Jesus' name, Amen. Tell us a bit about yourself. Hello, I am Katie Hunter and um, I started working at Cornerstone and Op Shop in June, just after lockdown had dissipated slightly. Um, I live in Carlisle, have a young family. I have Harry who has just started school and I have Rosie who has just turned two. My husband is Rob and he is an engineer and is in um, the mountain rescue and he um, looks after everybody out on the films. Excellent. What do you do, what do, you do before joining us? Um, I've worked in a retail environment mostly all of my adult life either part-time while I was studying or um, a little bit more after that and then became um, more interested in going to the managerial side of things. Uh, the role that I was in before here was working for a concession within uh, Debenhams department store. Um, I looked after a number of uh, different stores around the county actually um, so I'm very glad 
to be in one place even if we have still got many units to look after at the moment. How are you finding the new job? I absolutely love my new job. Everybody has made me feel so welcome. Um, everything's so diverse. One day is never the same as another, but it's it's it just is so exciting. I'm really enjoying it, and I couldn't be more thankful to have been given the opportunity. Uh, and what are you most enjoying about the job? The people. It has to be the people. I've met so many wonderful people. I've met so many eager people who come here, volunteer, and do a remarkable job. Um, I'm so thankful for them. I'm so thankful for the people who come in some daily um, to shop with us and to get a takeaway from us and keep us all energised and keep us all going. And that wonderful community spirit has got to be the best thing about this place. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Tell us who you are and why you volunteer in Cornerstone. I'm Bethany and I've volunteer, volunteered in Cornerstone now for about two years and I love it here. I love working here with all the amazing volunteers and just seeing the community spirit and all the customers in Cornerstone and how we can make an impact in the community and especially with the food bank and helping people in need. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what gives you hope? What gives you I'd say, especially at this tough time and what's happened in recent months, just seeing the amazing people of Carlisle, how we've all rallied round each other and that community spirit to get us all through these difficult times, which gives me hope for the future that hopefully that can carry on. We're now going to sing our third and final song, Living Hope.
that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the At the beginning of this service, I said that I was going to be hiding the word hope throughout the videos. Did you keep an eye out for them? I hid 12 hope words throughout this video. Well done if you spotted them all. Thank you for joining us today for our special Cornstone and Op Shop service. If you've been inspired by our volunteers and would like to join our team, drop me an email, manager at cornerstonecarlisle.org or call into Cornerstone and ask for Andy or Katie and we'll happily give you a volunteers application form to be part of our amazing team. Let's close in prayer. God of hope, we just pray that you will bless our community. Bless everyone who's been watching this video today. We pray that we will know your hope in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Goodbye. God bless.